this anticipation, this sitting on the edge of your seat and thinking, oh, it's going to happen. But what if it doesn't happen? Hey, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be talking about the end times. September 23rd is the date today, and there's some people around the internet that are saying that today's the day, and there's going to be a lot of things happening today. So we're going to find out. All right, coming up next. Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm talking about some teaching. I'm going to call it false teaching uh, right off the bat. And we're going to see in, in a loving way, though that's the goal, not to be a picking critique, as I try not to do, but rather discuss a subject. Now, this is from a fellow YouTuber. Uh, for all intents and purposes, she seems like a great lady, uh, probably around my age or my wife's age. Um, and she speaks of the Lord and scripture, and I have no doubt that this woman loves Jesus. So just kind of get that all out of the way. But she's got a channel uh, called Grace Overflowing, and we're going to be discussing the views that she has, and she's just going to watch, and I'm going to try and be biblical, as she would probably say she's trying to be biblical, and not to say she isn't necessarily, but what this is going to do is, well, a few things that we'll look at. Uh, as we go along. So without further ado, let's look at her channel. And um, I found this about a week and a half ago, just popped up in my feed. I think it might be on my second channel, Richard Contra Talk, uh, Contra Talk with Richard. That's my new channel with um, where I just have the talk shows that drop on Saturdays. So look out for those. Um, go over there and uh, find that channel. Uh, I'll put it in the description as well. But that's a separate longer form and I've got clips and stuff and some of the clips I put on this channel to tell you about that channel anyway so I think it's you know it's the algorithms finding you know different things and looking at different things and all that and it's not the same as normal so YouTube's a interesting wild wild west as it were so let's look at her here one and a half speed this video is 26 minutes we're not going to go the whole route um, but we're going to listen to quite a bit and Respond. This is just me sharing the dates that I am watching, and not just for rapture. As we know, we are in a very high watch season for a lot of things. The prophecy is being fulfilled every day, right before our eyes. And so okay, really fast. Her grace. Her name's not Grace, although I might call her Grace. I think her name's JC. Um, uh, rapture. Okay, and then high watch season. Now, even if, even if, even if you believe in the rapture which I no longer do. And that's probably another video. Uh, just cats out of the bag. There's a lot of reasons to not believe in the rapture. There's a lot of reasons. Theologically, there's a lot of reasons. But when you change and you look at when Revelation in particular was written uh, or what Thessalonians is really talking about, it's really the only place. Of course, the word's not in there, but neither is Trinity, blah, blah, blah. But even if you believe in a rapture, it only happens once. It's not like it happens all the time, right? And so to be like, oh, we're in this watch season, this high watch season. I understand Watchmen on the Wall. That's that's a whole thing, but uh, that's it, within the first minute. There's already like this anticipation, this sitting on the edge of your seat and thinking, oh, it's gonna happen. But what if it doesn't happen? Now she does say, you know, not setting dates, which is good because. Uh, 88 Reasons, the uh, rapture will be in 1988. That was written a few years ago. Late Great Planet Earth, that was another one. These huge, huge prophecy books. And they've been debunked over and over again, just with time, let alone all these other things. And yet they still look at Israel and, oh, this happened. Oh, it's 40 years, 70 years, 80 years. And it's just, it's exhausting. But we're going to look at why it's exhausting and what we need to do instead. So let's continue. So all of the things that Jesus spoke to that would be happening in the end times are happening at an alarming rate, my friends. And the funny thing is, is I've even watched the television and I have been able to pick up on these things that are significant and they are happening in the world and really speak to the truth that we are in the end and the Lord is returning. And so with that, I just wanted to put that out there and ask that you take all this to the Lord and pray about it. It's not my intention on any level to bring any fear with any of this stuff, but I do believe that the Lord shares these things with us so that we will not be overwhelmed that when things happen, even when they're challenging and hard in the flesh, that we won't be overwhelmed. Because... Okay, so we won't be overwhelmed. He shares these things with us. Great. Yeah, and that's good. And she says, go pray, right? She she says, go pray. She says, do this and this. I, I get it. And that's 
JC, thumbs up. I commend you for that. We should go pray. We should trust the Lord. We should continue to walk with him. Um, and he doesn't, you know, he doesn't want to leave. He doesn't leave us. He doesn't forsake us. Right. And these are encouraging things. Um, but I still have a lot of problems with you, uh, or at least your theology and many others theology like this. And again, we'll kind of let this continue to unfold. He goes before us and he speaks to us the things that are to come. So with that, I want to share these things with you all today. And I will say that there are several things that I'm watching, which are the 23rd of September, the 24th of September, the 25th through the 27th, which is the Feast of Trumpets, October the 5th and October 10th. And so I will be going down that list, speaking into each specific date and why is a high watch time for me. And so with that, I want to start with September the 23rd. This is a huge day prophetically because it connects to the Revelation 12 sign that happened five years ago on that day. If you are not familiar with the Revelation 12 sign, basically it was a celestial event that happened on this day. I recommend that you Google it. There's plenty on it. I won't go into detail because. I'm okay, let's go ahead and Google it. Revelation 12 sign. <clears throat> I use result hunter because it's for conservatives, but really I do. It's actually, it's okay. It's not, it's not as good as Google, but anyway, um, biblical science. All right. So biblical science, this is from five years ago, right? So 2017, that's, that was five years ago, right? Already five years. That's crazy. Once in 7,000 years. Okay. Tetrad signs, revelation 12 sign one day. I didn't even plan on doing this, but just look at this real quick. I guess one day last fall, I was working in my office with a desk phone rang. I was a reader of the Catholic astronomer. Sorry, uh, uh, calling, calling me. It was a weird with a call, calling me with a question. He asked why the Vatican Observatory blog was full of discussion on black holes or whatnot. What's whatnot? Is that like a type of black hole? When there was something much more momentous to talk about. Yeah, people. It turns out that a momentous thing to which my caller was referring to is arrangement of the celestial bodies that will occur in 2017, September 23rd. On the date, according to various internet sources, the heavens themselves will be a table, 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 tableau. I don't know. Revelation 12. Sign. We'll read it in the King James just for everybody's sake. Because some people get all bent out of shape when I read other things. Not many people on this channel usually. But Revelation 12. King James. Ah, the woman and the dragon. Yeah, this is good because this is literally going to happen. Maybe. No. Uh, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and a moon under her feet and upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. And she began, she and she being with child received, excuse me, child cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon its heads and the tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born and she brought forth a man child who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up in to unto god to the throne and the woman fled into the wilderness and she was she hath a place prepared of god that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days war in heaven kjv is so much like like yoda wrote it it's it's really something else uh okay so Revelation. So first of all, we're talking about, this is where a lot of people, well, I'm just a literalist because I believe in a literal thousand year reign of Christ. Okay. That's the only thing that you believe that's literal. Everything else is not right. A woman clothed with the sun. Like, what does that mean? The moon, she's going to sit on the moon. How does that work? Right. The 12 stars, I'll switch to this. The 12 stars. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, Right there, a great red dragon. I mean, okay, well, China's a dragon. Uh, okay, but there's other things that are dragons. There's serpents, devil, right? Um, not to mention this is written in before 70 AD, the destruction of the temple. Now, if you take Revelation and you believe that Revelation was written in 90 AD, like a lot of people do and did, and you might still, that's fine. Uh, I'm not telling you you shouldn't 
I'll say it loosely. I'm not telling you you absolutely should not quote unquote believe the rapture. If you want to believe that, that's fine. There, there is very minimal scriptural reference for it. And there are a lot of just theological and just practical reasons that I don't believe in the rapture anymore. But the 12 stars um, travailing in birth appeared another wonder, great red dragon, seven heads and 10 horns. Okay, so again, horns and heads, all these things. Rome was a city set on seven hills. And there's rulers within where John writes. There's Caesars, there's there's emperors. And, and, and all these things are symbolic. You have to remember, like, this is basically John writing in like Nazi type Germany in the sense that there's Rome everywhere. He's in prison, right? He's on, he's riding on the Lord's day on the Island of Patmos, right? He's in a prison colony because of the Lord and because of the testimony of Christ, right? He starts with that. So we have to know the context and he's writing to the seven churches, right? He's not writing to us. There's no church age. That's all nonsense. That's all made up. There's no church ages. Okay. And there's no things to say, well, this is happening. This is, and this really means this and this and this. And this. We have to know, according to the literature, the literal interpretation, not what we see it is or what we think a dragon is or anything like that, but rather what the interpretation is according to the literature. Revelation's prophecy, right? It's apocalyptic literature, though it's not the only apocalyptic literature that is around that first and second century. There's a lot of it. But it's the only apocalyptic literature, at least the whole book, where it's in the Bible. Of course, Daniel has some and other places. So we often take this and what we do, and I love this, uh, and I'll borrow from Gary DeMar and probably other people too, is, is this newspaper exegesis. We look at the paper, you know, this is a book, and we're like, oh, geez. oh, this is what's happening right now. And it's like, but you don't do that with other things. Well, that's God's word. This is God's word. That's people, you know, it's different. Is it though? Is it really different? Because we kind of mystical treat the Bible in this like weird mystical way. Yes, it's God's word. Absolutely. Yes, it's sufficient. Yes, it's 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 infallible. Yes, it's inerrant. Absolutely, it's God's word. Don't don't hear me that I'm saying anything other than that. But we treat it like it wasn't written by humans. Yes, men carried along by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Yes. But somebody still wrote it down. John, Paul, Peter, Luke right? Or they're speaking it and someone's writing it down. This is how it worked, right? It didn't just come down, you know, from heaven, like, you know, and FedEx style or whatever, and just appeared complete, you know, KJV, of course, like it's, it's silly. And so we do this and we think, well, this is what's happening now. We look at, we look at Russia and this, and, and I've, I used to listen to a lot of MacArthur, still love MacArthur. And he believes a lot of this, and a lot of people do. And that's I'm not trying to bemoan or disparage anybody. But, I mean, even sermons in the early 70s, because he has all his sermons. And it's great. And you can see a lot of you know, his fire and conviction and you know his, his stalwartness for just conservative biblical principles is great. But, like, even in the early 70s, like 71, 72, he's talking about Russia and this and that. And this is before the fall of the Soviet Union. This is before the rise of communist China and all those other things, at least to the power it is today. And you're like, oh, and this and that happening and these things and this war. And, you know, people are doing that with Ukraine. Oh, the, the war in Ukraine and Russia. And it's like, do you know how many wars there's been since even, you know, World War II and the war in Ukraine? Dozens and dozens of wars and skirmishes, fights and all sorts of, I mean, there's wars in Africa all the time. We don't know about it. And that's the problem. We put ourselves in it. And that's what I want you to do. Don't put yourself in the word of God and just shove yourself in there as if it's written to you. It's written for you, for me, but it's not written to you. Okay. And that's where a lot of people miss. They think, well, you know, it's written to us. It's written to America. America's not in the Bible, blah, 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 blah. It's like, neither is Panama. <clears throat> right? Neither is Canada. So what? Like, there's no reason to think, even if John wrote in 90 AD, which I don't believe he did, but even if he did, he you're telling me he's writing and he's waiting thousands of years for anybody to actually understand this book. God's going to wait thousands of years for this to be actually applicable. Again, that practically makes no sense. Right. We see in Revelation these things soon to take place. Revelation 1, 
the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave. So it's not the revelation of John, like some people say. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ, but anyway. God gave unto him and shew unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. Shortly come to pass? All these things are waiting almost 2,000 years? I don't think so. We bear the record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's why he's there, right? John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace to you. Who's he writing to? Is he writing to JC or John MacArthur? I'm going to try and convince you that that's not correct, that there's a better view, a more hopeful view, a more biblical view. But even if that's true, even if the rapture is true, all we're doing is we're waiting and we're like, okay. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to plan anything. I'm not, I'm not going to have kids. I'm not going to do this and that. Cause you know, why would I do that? You know, Jesus is returning at any time, but there's stories of people, even during world war one and world war two that didn't have children and they sever their legacy. And guess what? Hitler wasn't the antichrist. Quote, unquote. By the way, antichrist isn't even in revelation. Not even once the word it's only mentioned in first John. And there are antichrists then in the world, in the world. There are many antichrists who have come into the world. Who's an antichrist? The one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. You're against Christ. But somehow we get all mystical with these things. We don't need to get mystical, okay? Now, I understand it's a holy book. I understand the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Men spoke from God, right? Carried along by the Holy Spirit. Yes, 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 absolutely, 100%, 1,000%. But that doesn't mean we treat it weird or we say, well, the context is this, but I really, I'm, I'm interpreting this as China as Russia. Anyway, back to JC's video here. I'm trying to keep this video short, but it was definitely a very, very rare, and I can't remember the specifics. I mean, I just feel like it was once in thousands of years, just a very, very rare occurrence that happened in the sun, moon, and stars. And I believe this is super significant because of the fact that Jesus mentioned. Okay. Sun, moon, and stars. Here's another thing. She's referring to, because she's a literalist, I get it. Well, I'm a literalist too. What are sun, moon, and stars, though? We have to understand what the text says in Revelation. Sun, moon, and stars. Well, let's just search sun, moon. Okay, so right off the bat, sun, moon, and stars. Well, it seems like, well, stars are getting knocked down. Okay, do you know how big stars are, though? Our star is a tiny star, a puny star, the sun, that we call the sun. It's 93 million miles away. If it gets any closer, even just like by fractions, and this is what another good reason for the fine, it's called the fine-tuning argument of, of God and, and design and everything else. If the sun gets any closer, we will fry just like that. And that's just a tiny sun, right? We're not even talking about <clears throat> multiple, a third of the stars. Do you know how many stars there are? Clearly, let me just be bold and blunt here. This isn't talking about actual stars. The Earth is a tiny marble in comparison to these massive, giant... They're massive. And that's just a couple stars. There's no way these are actually stars. So then you say, well, what is it? I'm glad you asked. Uh, I'm trying to make these videos on Friday, by the way. So, uh, you know, I don't want to beg for subscriptions. But if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I'm trying to get past that thousand mark so I can, you know, feel better about myself. So I'm only going to ask once, please like and subscribe. All right. Okay. So sun, moon, and stars. Let's go back to this. A little bit of a Bible study. This kind of just turns into, but that's the whole point of this channel. I want to be against something, but for the sake, I want to be against JC. This, this gal seems like a nice lady. Like I already said, right? Very uh, convictional. And I want to love Jesus. And I want to know what's going on. Got it. Sure. Great. Praise God. But I want to correct you, JC, and say you, you're you incorrect here. Praise him, sun, moon, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. So again, this could just say, oh, this is creation. But is it just creation? All right. So Genesis 37, 9. Then he dreamed another dream. And I told it, told it to his brother, behold, I've dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun, the moon, and 11 stars were bowing down before me. Well, what are those 11 stars, those sun, moon, all that? Well, that's people, it's brothers, right? But his brothers weren't just regular men in the sense of they're the heads of the tribes of Israel, right? And what happens with Joseph? Does he not have prosperity in Egypt? And they come down and he feeds his family and they stay there. And of course, they've been in the captivity for 450 years and they come out of slavery in Egypt and all. Yeah. 
So yes, there are times that the Bible is talking about sun, moon, and stars physically. Absolutely. Right. That's not what I'm getting. Every single thing is a picture and an image of something else. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is the context. You have to have the context. What's the context? Well, Revelation is very apocalyptic, number one. So you have to have that. Number two, if you say, well, it's actually written in before 70 AD, not well after. What is this talking about? What, is there an event somehow in, in, in 70 AD that happened? Yes, the destruction, not just of the temple, but of Jerusalem. This is where if you look at Matthew 24 and you reorient your mind and say, listen, let me just step back for a moment. I know you might believe, you know, you listener might watch and love the rapture and just, you know, waiting for Jesus, right? Well, we see in Acts 1, Jesus is going to come back in the same way. The two men say, two angels. Okay. It doesn't say anything about a rapture though. So there's like a second coming and then there's like a, it's kind of like how salvation, some people say you get faith before faith and then you get saved kind of pre-faith regeneration. And it's like you have, you get saved before you're saved. Like that seems to be the same type of thing here where it's like Jesus is coming back and he's coming back again. And it's like, there's not a second, second coming. It's just, he's coming back. But again, what Jer Gary DeMar recently said to me, he's like, the thing, the next thing on your eschatological calendar is your death. But we don't live like that, right? Especially the last few decades. We think, well, you know, it's whatever. Yeah, Jesus could come back at any time. Do you not remember in 2001 was September 11th, right? 20 years ago, 21 years ago. Or 1941, 1940, Hitler, Nazi Germany, communists. I mean, there's way, way worse times than right now. Yes, it's bad. I get it. Wars, rumors of wars. But that's always been. And we're going to look at some scripture because this video is going a little long already. But he's saying sun, moon, and stars. Sun, moon, and stars are people. And especially in an instance that's apocalyptic, clearly it's not talking about stars that are coming to Earth. That's impossible. Okay? It's impossible. It's not going to happen. The Earth would be utterly destroyed. And it happens more than once in Revelation. Which means it's either hypocritical or... Uh, uh, not hypocritical. Uh, contradictory. Or <clears throat> something else entirely that makes absolutely no sense. And we're also waiting nearly 2,000 years for this to happen. Also, that makes no sense. That's not, Shortly take place? What does that mean? Words don't mean anything then. If you're going to take it literally, this should have happened. Say this is written in, oh, I don't know, 66, 67. And it's going to shortly take place in, oh, I don't know, 70. Well, that's shortly. That's a couple years. Within this generation, Jesus says in Matthew 24, this generation will not pass away until all these signs happen. Well, generation's 40 years, biblically. If this he's saying this around 30, generation 40 years later, they're all 20, 30 years old. Now they're in their 60s and 70s, and they see the destruction of Jerusalem, or still the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. He says what? And you see it happening, the abomination of desolation in the temple. There's no more temple there. This is why they say they have to have a third temple. There's nothing in scripture that says we have to have a third temple, or we will have a third temple, rather. That's implied. That's another thing they just kind of add on there exegeting and or uh eisegeting excuse me eisegeting it putting injecting it as it were it's not there but they say and you're on your rooftop well i'm not on my rooftop right we don't do rooftop we don't worship on the sabbath anymore we don't do this we don't have a cloak all those other things escape to the mountains it says well how can you escape it if it's a worldwide tribulation you can't unless it is a localized thing and Jesus is coming in judgment. Jesus is coming again. Well, we see throughout the Old Testament, I don't have time for it. Maybe another time. Jesus, when he comes, he comes in judgment. It's the same language we saw when God judges Israel with Babylonian captivity. And the first temple is destroyed. He's mirroring the second temple and what happened with the first with the second. Not a third. There's no third temple. It won't happen. It won't happen. Okay? I'm confident. Why? Because the Bible says nothing about it and because there's no reason for it because all these things are referring to the second temple that is no longer there. God closed that generation. He said 30 to 70, it's 40 year gap. He said, we're done. The window is closing. I'm closing it. And we see all the first Christians are Jews, right? Acts 2 in particular. Then we get to Acts 10. Now we're in Acts 13 and Paul and uh, Barnabas are going to the Gentiles. Now, that was likely just localized there in Pisidian Antioch and not necessarily the whole area that, you know, Jews no longer get the gospel at all. That's not what he's saying. But the point is nonetheless the same of the gospel's for everybody. Good news is for everybody, not just some people. So, get a little sidetracked, I know. These representational things, 
what do we see? Look at all these different flags. They're representational, right? You've got stars. You've got, there's a moon. A lot of them, the Muslim flags are moons. The Japanese, here's the green with the red. I'm not sure what flag this is, of course. The New Japan or not Imperial Japan with the white flag. Red, that's a sun. We've got 50 stars. Here's another star. We've got 50 stars. Here we go. Here's another star. I think that, I can't remember. That's a South American country. Star, here's another star. Star, 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 and a moon, star. Sun, bunch of stars, sun, sun. These things matter, right? And these are representations. Now I understand. You might, well, yeah, but it says at other places that you shouldn't worship the host of heaven. Okay. Well, could that also be talking about leaders? Could be, right? Could be. But many people do worship the sun. My two year old and four year old, or four year old and six year old, rather having a conversation. And they were saying something about how the sun was God or one of them thought that the sun was God. I'm like, man, paganism starts early. But anyway, all right. So back to her. We're just going to watch this for a couple more minutes. And I've got some scripture. This went a little longer, but y'all are great for bearing with me. So the time of the end would be like the days of Noah. And according to the book of Jasher, it took Noah five years to build the ark, that judgmental five years to build the ark. And so it does seem that this being the five-year anniversary for that celestial event could be a very, very big deal. It also happens at the fall equinox, which I believe is the 22nd for us, but in Israel wow. is the 23rd. And, you know, there's a lot of notions of kind of the fall happening in the fall. And even as it relates to the rapture happening before the fall. So it's definitely. Okay. So we've had a lot of falls. A lot of falls, like physical autumn, right? I mean, there were people, all sorts of stuff with Donald Trump, right? He's going to get elected. And then he's going to get elected a second time. Whether you're talking about Marcus Rogers, whether you're talking about bigger names, smaller names, you're talking about these different people. I had a conversation with a guy, I remember several years ago, he mocked, you know, lovingly his friend who was saying that Jesus would come down and crown Donald Trump in 2021. President. Or something. And it's like... I mean, okay, like, I guess, but where are you getting this? I watch time, my friends, and so I ask you to consider all of that prayerfully. So September the 24th is a date that a lot of people are talking about right now, and it has to do with the German official who had what I believe was a slip of the tongue, and it spoke that on this day, everyone would remember where they were and what they were doing. And so that definitely does seem significant. Now, this is something I just recently had heard about when I did my last message. I hadn't yet heard about this. And beyond that, because of how it connects with Haggai, which is a minor prophet, it's two chapters, it's in the Old Testament, and I recommend that you all read it. It has to do with the construction of the new temple. And so what's interesting is that there are several dates Oh, I want to go there, but I'm not going to. was the sixth month, the 24th day. And what's interesting, as it relates to our calendar, the sixth month, the 24th day, Roe versus Wade was overturned. And so from there, there's another date mentioned, which is the ninth month, the 24th day, which obviously for us would be September 24th. And that seems very significant to me to a point where I have had a friend of mine, Sister Marsha, email me and say to me that the Lord had even heard. Okay, so, but <clears throat> we have different calendars. We have the, the Gregorian calendar. We have 12 months. Remember, July and August. Guess we're at it. October is eight. November nine. Decembre or December is ten. Those were the eighth, ninth, and tenth month. But then we shoved in July and August for Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. Both have thirty. That's why they both have thirty-one days because they both wanted that. What does Roe v. Wade have to do with it? I don't know. And I just think that that could definitely be significant as it relates to the way that there appears to be a manifestation, even as it relates to our calendar, the Gentile calendar. Now, finally, I want to share just quickly a dream that I had back in June of 2021. This dream was one that has really stuck with me, and I definitely felt that the Lord was speaking to me about this subject of war. It has been for a very long time. If you go back and look at my videos, you can see the history of it long before the Russia and Ukrainian war was a thing. I've been speaking on this subject. And so this was another one of those dreams. The dream was I was in the bed with a family member of mine and we were both asleep until we both awoke and she went out of the room to get some food because she was hungry. And she came back into the room. In the dream, we both fell back asleep and woke up from dreaming. And she said that she dreamed and heard war is coming. Okay, so real quick, she has a dream. <clears throat> she has a dream that she's dreaming, and her friend, family member, sleeping in a bed, uh, is there. Also has a dream. She comes back and says, "I woke up." So she has a dream about a dream, and her friend is dreaming in this dream. Okay. 
She said something about the damage, but I didn't hear her. So I asked her how much damage there would be. And she said, a quote, unknown amount. I said, that's interesting because in my dream, I heard your name and the number 24. And I asked her what the 24 meant. And she said, it took that many wipes. I understood that to mean Clorox wipes. And I also understood it to mean to clean the center console like of a vehicle. And then I woke up again. And so, my friends, there's just really a lot there that I don't think for the purpose of time I will speak into at this point. But I do want to say that the Ukrainian war happened on the 24th day of the second month, so February the 24th. And so, in my mind, I had already felt that this dream had come to pass because it does speak to war coming and war has come. But beyond that, my friends. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're going to be done with Miss JC here. But what did she appeal to? She appealed to Jasher, which is not in the Bible, right? Okay. But whatever. And then she mentions Haggai and a few other places. And she goes through in some other scripture and talks about that. Okay. But what she's what she's giving the authority, and this is where we have, and this is where super conservative going the right, but I believe, and you go right, you don't continue in this forever spectrum. You go back down to six. If you start at the clock at, you know, everybody's kind of middle of the road at 12. You know, the leftists go toward nine, the right go toward three, and eventually they meet back down at six. 666. Oh. This is what progressive Christians do. They don't use the Bible either. They say, well, my feeling, <clears throat> my experiences. But she's saying my feeling and my experiences. Just a different type of feeling and just a different type of experience. What does the text say? What does the word of God say? Not how I feel it. 12 or 24 Clorox wipes. What does that have to do with a revelation? <clears throat> Even if it's a private revelation, which the scripture only hints at and only tells about it never says you need to it's the same thing with speaking in tongues it never says you need to be baptized in the holy spirit in the sense of speaking in tongues that you need to have these things that you need to be slain in the spirit all this other stuff charismatics do this all the time pentecostals all that now is she obviously she's somewhat charismatic because she's not a cessationist because she believes in these ongoing dreams listen i just had a dream a couple weeks ago week and a half ago my old pastor great guy he was pastoring a church. It was a blue church. The church was run down, the building. There were bricks in the windows and everything like that. And he was working. And he had an associate pastor. And the associate pastor wasn't doing anything. Okay? And so his dream, or my dream, about this, they had like a Wednesday night. And people were there. And it was kind of open. And there was like, you know, random staircases to places. And it was, you know, kind of a weird gothic -y type building. But like not, if that makes sense. It was white. And they were like blue trim. It was really weird. And they also had a vodka distillery in there to make extra money. <clears throat> I texted him this. He's a cessationist. Pretty much I am too. I'm, I'm, I'm open to something if it actually is legitimate, but most of the time it's not. It doesn't seem like it. I texted him that, you know, and he just, he just laughed and that was it. But it's like, what does that mean? I, I don't know. Why did I dream about that? I'm not sure. I've had a few other weird dreams lately. All you get to do, and see, this is this is the thing that, though she is not saying it per se, she's saying God told me. God told me this. This is a new thing. And this is something that's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. Because we see this with progressive Christians. We saw this with Joseph Smith. We saw this with, uh, uh, um, what's his name, Miller. And, and a, lot of the, a lot of the 19th centuries where we get the cults, the Jehovah Witnesses and the Seventh-day Adventists and all these splinter groups. You know, there's no good church. You need to follow me. You know, an angel shows up and tells him a different gospel. Oh, that sounds familiar. What does the text say? What does the word of God say? Because you don't need to, even in the dispensational premillennial view, there's nothing that needs to happen. In the classic sense, nothing needs to happen before the rapture. This is it again. If there's a rapture, I don't believe there is any longer. Um, but if you believe that, fine. But there's nothing else that needs to happen between now and and the rapture. So live your life. Live unto the Lord. Do good things. God, Acts 2, 17, in the last days. We hear this all the time. Ah, oh, it's the last days. It's like, ah. Oh. I have a friend, family member. She's very last daisy. And I remind her constantly, listen, we've had this. We've had this. We've had this. This has happened. This hasn't happened. This other thing. War, war in Iraq, right? Bush, 2003. Syria. Israel, Israel, Israel. Listen, modern Israel hates God, just like every other nation. Okay? Now, there's Christians in modern Israel. I've met some of them. Great. But there's plenty of other people, Christians in other places, <clears throat> Brazil, Canada, Russia, 
Zambia, Hong Kong, wherever, right? There's Christians everywhere. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men dream dreams. So people hear this and they think, ah, see, I told you. I told you. Last days, this is what's happening. Is it? Is that what the context is? Peter is standing with the 11. It says in Acts 2.14. Go read it if you want to. He lifted up his voice, men of Judea who dwell in Jerusalem. Let it be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only third hour of the day. It's nine o'clock. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. So he quotes Joel. And this is being fulfilled now. Not 2022 now. We're talking 30 or so AD now. Okay. Yes, these prophecies, and most, and this is the difference between a futurist view where you see all these prophecies happening. It's still happening before us, you know, post-2022 or some stuff that's happening. But it's all ambiguous. And they often will use it if you don't have time for it. But you look at this and this guy and this guy and this gal will say this verse and Haggai or Joel or something like that or Revelation or Daniel. See, this is happening. This is what this means. And then somebody else will come along a year or two or 10 later and say, oh, that's what happens. That's what, because they, it just dissolves. Is this gal going to take off her videos when nothing happens today and tomorrow and October 8, 9, and 10? I hope so. I hope she will repent. I hope she will say, ah, I was wrong. Now she's saying, oh, I'm not setting dates. And then <laughs> she gives dates. Okay. God declares. All right. Sun, moon, and stars. It says the sun, moon, and stars, verse 20, uh, chapter two, shall be darkened. And the moon turned to blood. How does that work? Oh, it's red. It's a blood moon. John Hagee, four blood moons. This and this and this. What's happened? Nothing. Nothing's happened. Nothing's different. Oh, there's droughts and famines. Yes, that's always been happening, people. Always. The world has fallen. Do we not know what Paul's writing in, in Romans 8? The whole creation groans. It's like a woman giving birth, waiting. Angels long to look into these things. We're the crown. Okay. And again, we hear this. We're the crown of Christ. We're made in God's image, all this other stuff. And yet somehow we think there's a physical crown that's going to lower down. Right. Or we see the sun, moon, and stars and this and this and this. And we think, well, that's really the sun and the moon. No, even if the moon, which is tinier, it's a quarter of the size of earth. If the moon got any closer, we'd have massive tidal waves and massive problems. Just the moon alone, not to mention our sun and, oh, I don't know, a third of the stars, which is literally likely 10, tens of thousands of stars that are all far bigger than our sun. Think about it. It doesn't work. I mean, it's like a nuclear weapon to kill a gnat. Like it would, it would be decimating a thousand million times over. You can't be a literalist and think that it doesn't work. <clears throat> Just doesn't work. Men of Israel hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, man attested to by God with mighty works and signs and wonders that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death because it was impossible for death to hold him. Okay, so this is talking about dreams and visions. All these things we see. She's talking about dreams. I don't believe your dreams, JC. I'm sorry, I don't. You might have had a dream, that's fine. But what does it mean? And what if my dream contradicts your dream? Now what? Now what? Now what do we do? Because if I have a dream and I can interpret the blue and the this, and you know, so the Finland flag is blue and white and they like vodka in Finland. Therefore, my pastor has a this and he should go to Finland too and preach the gospel. So how I did that? Just, 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 a lot, just like that. Now you're not going to believe me because I don't believe my own self, but these people and she's, you know, 10,000 subscribers. Okay. But there's people that have tens of thousands, millions. And this is the prevailing view in Christianity, American Christianity. But we're so selfish and so self-centered that we think all these things are pointing to America, pointing to us. They're not. They're just not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's hard, but they're not. <clears throat> Genesis 20, Genesis 40, 42, Jeremiah 23, Daniel 7, Job 33, Matthew 2, other places that speak of dreams. A lot of times positive. Of course, we read what... Some of those in uh, with Joseph, the sun, moon, and stars, uh, especially the they're, they're his brothers bowing down. The thing I want to close with, Zechariah 10.2. <clears throat> the idols speak deceitfully. Diviners see visions that lie. They tell dreams that are false. They give comfort 
in vain. Therefore, the people wander like sheep, oppressed for the lack of a shepherd. Okay, so the diviners are telling of fake dreams. That's a big deal. And they're giving comfort unnecessarily. Now, she's trying to give comfort. Hey, I'm not sending any dates, you know, this and that. Okay, fine. But the far better comfort is that these things have already taken place. That Jesus is ruling and reigning now. He's king now. The kingdom of God is at hand, he tells us, his first words in the Gospel of Mark. This, that, that matters. Because if Jesus isn't on the throne now, then what? Who's on the throne? Satan? The UN? The king of England now because the queen died? Right. It, I mean, there's, there's just so many different things that just, it, it, it doesn't compute. It doesn't work. And when things don't work, they just, well, they just brush it under the rug and move to the next thing. We can't do that. We don't do that with the Bible. The Bible is not your own personal play thing that you can just manipulate and do whatever you want. Cause this is again, what the leftists do people who don't believe the Bible, but sadly, a lot of people on the right conservatives so-called i love jesus i love trump i love the gop you know politics and you know they'll get angry about you know yoking politics but at the same time they'll yoke politics and it's like i don't what makes no sense diviners they see visions and they lie that's a problem they tell dreams that are false they comfort in vain unfortunately jc you're comforting in vain because these things are not, nothing's going to happen. And if it does happen, it's literally a coincidence. Okay. There, there's, there's nothing in the Bible that says this and this and this, that this is going to happen on this day. What about last September or September, 2017 or September, 2002 or September, 1990 or September, 1980? Like, it, just, it doesn't work. Ecclesiastes 5, 7. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity, but fear God. Another passes much dreaming and many words are meaningless i love that even more therefore fear god fear god it's meaningless these things are meaningless i'm sorry i don't i'm trying not not trying to be mean but these things are meaningless they don't help anybody yet sadly so many people get sucked into this in various camps for whatever reason well no i know the reason because we don't want to do the work of studying reading praying and memorizing scripture we don't want to do that it's easier to just rely on a dream, isn't it? Let's be real here for a moment. It's easier to just be like, well, you know, I had this dream though. I had a feeling. I should go here. Now, can God give a dream? I believe he can. I believe he can. Right? And a little bit of caveat. But does he? Should we rely on that? No, no, and no. We have a sure word. We have his word. This is my reader's Bible here. This is the Bible. Okay? Read it. Memorize it, know it, read it more and more, read it, understand it, seek to know God through it. The word of God, the spirit of God, he uses it through the preaching, through the reading, through the conviction. I mean, there's things that you might read and you think, I've never seen this before. How did this, and this applies so well. Has it ever happened to you? If it hasn't happened to you, you're not reading the Bible. Maybe you don't even know Jesus. If you do, or repent, turn to Christ. Because these feelings, these emotional things, they don't last. You're going to need another vision, another dream, another that needs to be bigger. I went to heaven. I died. And I went to heaven. How many people do we hear say that? Now, is that physically possible? Of course, it's physically possible. There's all sorts of things that are physically possible. Just because it's possible doesn't mean it's probable or actual. Right? There's like gradations. It's possible that all these things, you know, fill in the blank. All those things are possible. Just because they're possible doesn't mean they happen. This one's scary. Deuteronomy 18, 18. I will raise up for you a prophet like you from among their brothers. This is talking to Moses. Remember, Deuteronomy. Talking about Jesus. Right? It's not talking about somebody today. It's not talking about, you know, some Christian guy or gal or, you know, oh, I'm that prophet. No, you're not. The sects and the cults and all these other people do this all the time. I will put my words in his mouth and I will tell them everything I command them. I will hold accountable whoever does not listen to the words that speaks in his, that he speaks in my name. But the prophet who presumes to speak a message in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in another name of other gods, that prophet must die. 
Are you willing to die for these dreams, JC? Sid Roth, Michael Brown, these very charismatic -y people, continuationist, open-ended, just let anything happen. You're willing to die for these things? I ask you that. I'm not saying I'm going to stone you or kill you. I'm saying the severity of it. God is severe. False prophecy, bad, 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 like the worst bad. Why? Because people don't have the word. They don't have the gospel. And most of these things, this is the argument that a lot of uh, cessationists or non-continuationists would have, is because we have the Bible. It's complete. We don't need extra stuff. Because why? Well, Jesus is trying to comfort us. But he's already comforted us in a multiplicity of ways. He sent the comforter himself. Is the Holy Spirit not enough? Uh-huh. Is he? Is he not enough to convict and comfort? I mean, that's what he's called, the comforter. And yet we're supposed to listen to this gal or somebody else. Well, you know, I want more. That's exactly right. We want more because we're very consumeristic in our world because we're so unsatisfied. The grass is greener over there. So I'm going to go over there. And I go over there and I'm like, well, that vision didn't really work out as well. That dream didn't quite square. I, I, I need a new one. I want another one. Okay. Do you know? Why? Why do you need that? I want you to ask that. And that's what I'll wrap up, wrap up with. Wrap up with. Woo. Why? Could God do these things? Yeah. Do we demand these things? Do we look for these things? Do we trust in these things? No. No. Well, it's from God. Okay, maybe. But what, what is that adding to your faith? What is that adding to people? How are you encouraging people? Even if the rapture is happening, say there's a rapture, just standard rapture stuff. That's the next thing on the eschatological calendar, you know, 2030 or whatever, 2024. I don't know. Right before the election. I don't know. I'm not setting any dates, really. But say that's the case. What are you going to do exactly? Just tell other people. We'll just tell other people anyway. Live unto the Lord anyway. Work hard anyway. Change diapers. Cook food. Go to work. Get up early. Do hard things. That's what we need to do. Show up on time. Keep your word. Be trustworthy. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Don't worship other gods. Don't have idols. This is what the law says thousands of years ago. Live unto the Lord. Work hard. Do hard things. It's worth it. Trust me. Build Christian schools. Homeschool your children. Read scripture. Catechize your children. Husbands, lead your wives. Teach them. Listen, show them. Wives, listen to your husbands. Submit unto them. Even if they're not perfect, because, well, you're not perfect either. Right? If you want to get married, go find a husband or a wife. If you don't have the desire, then remain single and be servant serving unto the Lord. Be a good steward of your time. Don't waste time. And we all waste time. And when you do, repent. Go back to Christ. Don't look for these things. Oh, this next this next hit, it's like a drug. We just, ah, you know, eat it, inject it, whatever we want. No, we don't need that, people. Stop worrying about the seasons and the various times and wonders and miracles and all this other stuff. Oh, I mean, on and on. Matthew 28, is clear. 16, it says the 11 disciples saw him. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Don't doubt. Embrace Christ. And Jesus says in 18, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. What does that mean? It means all authority has been given to me on heaven and in heaven and on earth. Not this, you know, stained glass only, but all over the place. This is the hope. Christ is reigning now. This is the positive, good hope. Not the, the decimating, terrible, I mean, the world is far more Christian than it was 2,000 years ago. Don't you agree? More Christian universities, schools, seminaries, Bibles. I mean, look at this, right? This, I mean, this alone, this is one of my many Bibles in my own native language. Is that not progress? Is that not a hope? Is that not something better? More Christians than ever live right now. How is that getting worse? We have to look at the broad scope. Oh, there's wars and diseases and famines. Yeah. So there was in the first century. So there was in the eighth century BC. So there was during the plagues of Egypt. So there was fill in the blank. You can't just look at right now or the last couple of years. Go therefore and make disciples, he says in verse 19, of all nations, not just white people, 
not just Americans, not just Westerners, all nations. There's more Christians in China than there are in America. Now, there's a lot more people in China. But you wouldn't know that by looking at, you know, watching CNN or Fox or something, right? Baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teaching them. Not relying on dreams. Not looking for visions. Teaching them to observe all that I command you. This is Jesus. Teaching them. These 11 guys that they get a 12th, they go change the world. They change the calendar. Our calendar is still based on Christ's birth. Hospitals, science, education, all these things are Christian things. And we've abdicated it because we've embraced the lie that the rapture is happening. It's the end days, quote unquote. Hebrews 1, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. It is the last days. It's been the last days. It will be the last days until Christ's return. But likely your death is the next thing, even if you're 20 years old. Work hard for the Lord. Stop, stop, stop looking for dreams. Stop paying attention to people like this. Stop. It's not helpful. Even if they're all right, how helpful is it? We have the Bible. We have the sure and steadfast word from God himself. Far better than some dream and interpretation of a dream. Same thing with tongues. Same thing with miracles. Same thing though, we don't need it. It's unnecessary at best. Is it lawful? Maybe it's lawful, like Paul says, but is it profitable? Can we do these things? Sure. Can you have this? I guess. But is it law? Is it profitable? No, it's not. Teaching them, behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, the end of this new aeon, this new arche of time. That's what it is. I pray this was helpful. I really do. Uh, obviously, a longer video. But if you made it all the way here, please uh, be encouraged. And I hope this finds you well, because my goal, again, is to be against the world, be against the culture and the church and these things, but for the world's sake. I'm doing this for a gal like JC, who's all intents and purposes deceived in thinking these things are so. Nothing's going to happen on the 23rd to 24th, October 9, 8, 9, 10. There's nothing in the Bible that says these dates are actually true. All you're doing is piecemealing these certain things. That's it. We don't need to do that. Trust the word of God. Trust God because it's God himself. It's God breathed. Even if God is giving these dreams all over the place, which sure is possible, even if that's the case, if the rapture is a thing, work hard. You don't know when it actually is. I mean, people did this in the first century. And they said, get to work. What are you doing? Why are you standing around? That's in Acts 1. And we see this in other places. Paul condemns this. So again, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're encouraged by this. Y'all take care. Have a great day. We'll see you.